last week I blew through all of my CO2, um, which meant I needed to go make a visit to Prax Air and get a refill. They actually gave me a really nice tank this time. It's very lovely and clean. So I kind of wanted to show you guys how to A, set up a CO2 tank with a regulator, um, say you've got a kegerator or something, or you just wanted to get one to do force carb stuff, or um, maybe you've got a picnic tap kind of situation going on. Whatever your situation is pretty much the same. You basically have a CO2 tank, obviously. This is a 10 pound one. Um, you have a regulator, uh, which has, I actually printed out a diagram because I didn't know any of these terms. So, as you can see on the screen that I'm going to overlay, uh, we have a, this is a high pressure uh, gauge. So this is basically telling you what's uh, kind of in the tank-ish. Um, this is a low pressure gauge. This is telling you how much is in your lines. Um, this is just kind of how you use it. Uh, so to the left means less gas, to the right means more gas. Um, so that's just your pressure adjuster. Um, we have a quick release valve right here. Um, same as like what's on your kegs, uh, really easy. Uh, if you say you turn down your pressure and you want to release all the pressure in your lines, um, you can pull that. Just make sure you don't have a, a, a fitting on your liquid line because it will suck everything up. Anyway, that's for another day. And then you have your CO2 inlet nut, your CO2 inlet nipple. Um, and this, these are your, uh, basically your outlets. Um, so I have a Y valve on mine um, because this line goes into my kegerator. So it, I run it through the back and like inside. Um, the reason I do that is A, to save kegerator space and B, because um, CO2 obviously gets smaller the colder it gets. So you actually get less use out of your CO2 tank if you stick it in a cold environment. So it's better to just leave it out and you know drill a little hole. A lot of kegerators actually have holes in the back already and you just gotta feed a line. Um, and then the other line I just use for like my beer gun, um, I'll purge kegs with it. Like I kind of use it as my workhorse for everything that's not, you know, serving beer. Um, so that's kind of the, all the parts of the regulator. Um, super simple to put it on. Um, honestly, I think putting the fittings on is more difficult because like this guy's got a gasket in it already. So all you got to do is screw it on and make sure it's tight. Um, uh, so I'm going to show you guys how to like put it on in the right way. Well, at least what I think is the right way. So if you're putting on your uh, outlet fittings, definitely use some Teflon tape in your connections um, just to make sure that you don't have a leak. Um, and a way, good way to test um, for leaks, actually, I use my, uh, my Hudson spray and I spray sanitizer around them to see if anything bubbles and if something does bubble, you know you have a leak, you got to fix it. Um, and then these guys are just shut off valves essentially. Okay, that's interesting. I think this, um, this valve is broken actually, now that I look at it, it feels broken. Or maybe it's just not tight enough. <coughs> Interesting. Okay, well, we're gonna have to see if I have a leak there. Um, okay, so on the CO2 tank, you basically have where you connect the uh, CO2 nut, and then you have a valve. So 
Righty tighty lefty loosey, same as everything. Um, obviously, when they give it to you at the shop, it's going to be closed, or what's the point? Um, a 10 gallon tank like this, uh, in my area at least, usually runs me, depending on where I go and who I'm feeling like supporting that week, um, around 27 to like 35 bucks. Um, so it gets expensive if you have a lot of leaks and have to refill it like every week. So check your fittings um, and just tighten everything as good as you can. So, okay, let's do it. Um, I have this. Uh, you need a, a thin wrench because this is a tight fit. Okay. So basically I'm just going to hand thread. Um, another tip, Sarah's hot tip today, is uh, I would aim or like angle my uh, regulator up a little bit. So if you're standing, you can see it. I just, um, sometimes I screw up and don't do it and I always hate myself later because I have to take it back off because I can never see it, the camera can't see it. It's not great. All right, so I just hand tighten it because it's easier. Oh, also you're gonna have to kind of hold it because it's gonna want to go down. This is not the ideal wrench for this, um, but I don't have a crescent wrench that fits this. So yeah, um, when you're doing this, start your regulator off kind of far back, because um, as you can see, it mine already shifted. That should be good. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure all my valves are closed, um, obviously, first. Um, you want your valves to be closed because we want to check these fittings and connections first. With our Hudson sprayer, we're just going to see if we get any bubbles. You can also usually hear if you've got a leak, especially at a high pressure. I'm going to turn this all the way to the left, which is off. Um, so that this will keep it out of this area, essentially. So no leaks yet. Um, just spray, make sure there's nothing that I can't hear. Cool, cool, cool. Just inhaled a lot of sanitizer. Okay, so you can see our um, high pressure valve went up to around 1,000. A full tank, you'll get around 1,000. Uh, PSI and I read that if you have one um, cooler uh, it's going to be between around 600 to 800 depending on how cool your uh, kegerator is. So I kind of use this as a gauge to see when my CO2 is either running low or I'm completely out when I wake up. Um, if you're completely out it will hit the bottom. Um, I've also heard people say that it'll hit like 100 PSI and it means you're out. So keep an eye out for that. Um, plan your day around it, I guess. So I'm going to just slowly open this up and see if I got any leaks, which I think I might. Okay, so I'm at 10. Okay, so I have a leak right here. I can see it. Okay, so where I see this leak is right here in this connection. I don't know if you can see it bubbling, but um, that is really not good because this is supposed to be off. So I'm going to grab a smaller wrench. Okay, so best for this is a small crescent wrench. Um, I'm actually going to just take this hose completely off and see where that gets us. Okay, that's the problem. Okay, so um, if this is not tight, it doesn't work. 
Yeah. All right, we're going to get more of an education than I thought we were. OK, so I'm turning my gas all the way off. I thought this was going to be really easy. I'm going to take this whole thing off. Annoying. The joys of home brewing. Oh. All right, so I'm just taking this off. Okay, she's coming off. She's coming off. Okay. how ball valves work. So there's a little ball on it and then it kind of hooks into this little area where there's a little, uh, you can see that there's a little, um, you know, thing that turns it essentially. And so you just have to feed this so that it fits and catches there. And then it'll turn it and that's that's open, and that's closed. Open, closed. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, so we're gonna tighten this guy back up. Hopefully I don't freak out. So before I could feel that the ball lock wasn't engaging. That's what I was talking about. Um, This is the most annoying thing. Oh, that feels much tighter. Okay. I think we're good. I can feel it. Feels good. That makes sense why when I was increasing my um, CO2 to burst carb, that it was leaking. So it was basically just forcing itself away. Okay, now we can do the test all over again. Okay, so we're going to try to Make this not so curly. Okay. So I'm going to turn this guy back on. Um, so basically I'm just allowing CO2 to flow into it. I'm going to raise my PSI. And we're leaking from somewhere. Okay, so we are now leaking from um, where I attached it back to the Y. So I'm going to just keep tightening it. All right, let's see if that did it. No, not at all. Oh, all right. The other one's doing it now. I'm just going to try to tighten this one. What in the hell is going on with these guys? Why does everything always fail at once? We did it. All right, I'm just cranking it up real high. Make sure that we actually did it and I'm not crazy. Okay. Okay. Um, I am now exhausted. Uh, I did not expect to show you guys that at all. 
like this wasn't planned in any way. I didn't even realize I really had a leak. Um, well, now you know how to troubleshoot freaking leaks, I guess. Uh, I'm going to drink a beer now that I have some fucking CO2. And yeah, I hope this was helpful. This was probably like, this was when I started one of the most terrifying things to do. Um, I actually made my husband set up my kegerator for me because I didn't want to touch the CO2. I was really afraid of like blowing up our apartment. Um, but uh, you can do it. All you need is like a wrench. You got this. It's very easy. And uh, a wrench and some patience and some Teflon tape. Those will get you through it. And at the end, you get to drink a beer. This is me being a thousand percent honest about having to drink a beer after this. Who wants to take bets on this being a gusher? Looky there, looky there. Not too shabby, if I do say so myself. Well, I hope one day you get to experience the pure joy it is to drink a draft beer after having to screw around with the CO2 for half an hour because it's a truly wonderful feeling. Thanks for watching, like, and subscribe. You basically have a regulator. You basic putting fittings on. Uh, definitely use some of the, um, hey babe. Reed, what's the tape called that you put on pipe fittings? Thank you, love you. This is going in the bloopers. This one's actually, like you can see my, my thing's not actually on all the way. This is actually why I had to get more CO2 just because my thing was leaking. Um, don't do that. And then I'm gonna have to move. Okay. This is not the easiest to do for camera. Why? Shut down. Now I gotta figure out how to do this. All I wanna do is drink beer.